Welcome to our community of teachers, where practical strategies meet real classroom impact. Whether you're just starting out or looking to energize your teaching, you're in the right place. By the end of this video, you'll have five easy-to-use active learning techniques that could help your students achieve higher test scores than traditional lectures. So let's dive in. First things first, what do we actually mean by active learning? Let's take a moment to explore the concept before diving into the strategies. Active learning is a pedagogical strategy where students are actively and not passively engaged in the learning process. Active learning ensures that students go beyond passively listening to their teachers in the classroom by giving them a role to play in their own learning. As a result of active learning, students are able to develop skills such as critical thinking and collaboration. In contrast, passive learning occurs when a teacher dictates the learning. In other words, students receive information and memorize it, making it difficult for students to develop skills. A benefit of active learning includes motivating students to become more engaged in the process of learning and building stronger relationships with their peers and teachers. It is important to remember that active learning can happen beyond the classroom and without the teacher. However, students will still require clear guidance and support from their teachers. Examples of active learning involve student participation in activities such as group discussion, experiential learning, role play, presentations, reflections, group work, and many more. Successful active learning takes planning and preparation, but with the right approach, active learning will pay enormous dividends in your class. Now that we understand active learning, let's explore five practical techniques, starting with the pause. The pause involves intentionally stopping during a lesson to allow students time to think, reflect, and process information. This brief break can significantly enhance comprehension and retention. Encourage students to use this time for silent reflection. Think, pair, share activities, or answering questions. For instance, after teaching a new concept, you might pause and ask, how does this concept connect to what we learned last week? In an English lesson during a reading session, pause and ask, what key incidents happened in this last chapter? This encourages students to take ownership of their learning, retrieve and deepen their knowledge. You may want to facilitate reflection by asking open-ended questions that prompt deeper thinking. This not only helps students process what they've learned, but also allows you to gauge their understanding and address any confusion. Use the pause to promote deeper understanding and reflection, making your lessons more effective and engaging for your students. Please remember that the pause is only a short activity and should be used more frequently than your usual classroom activities. During the pause, you can use active questioning techniques to prompt deeper thinking and check for understanding. Let's take a closer look at how to do this effectively. Questioning stands as the bedrock of effective teaching and learning. Educators should employ various questioning techniques, including open-ended, probing, and reflective questions. If they want to cultivate critical thinking, heighten engagement, and develop comprehension skills among their students. To ensure the success of these methods, they must be meticulously crafted to accommodate a diverse range of learning styles and cognitive abilities. Teachers should actively encourage participation and provide opportunities for each student to express their unique perspectives. The use of different questioning techniques in the classroom fosters a dynamic and interactive atmosphere, encouraging lively discussions, animated debates, and the exploration of complex concepts among students. We recommend creating an environment that inspires students to formulate their own questions, thereby promoting proactive learning and independent thinking. Great questions naturally lead to classroom discussions. And it's not just about students talking. It's about making thinking visible, challenging ideas, and building collective understanding. Next, we have classroom discussion. This straightforward approach will help you create an engaging and educational environment for all students. Let's get started. Step 1. Choose the right topic. Pick a topic that's relevant and intriguing to your students. It should be broad enough to spark diverse opinions, yet focused enough to guide meaningful discussion. Step 2. Set clear guidelines. Before starting, clearly outline the discussion rules. Emphasize respectful listening, taking turns, and how to disagree constructively. This sets the tone for a productive discussion. Step 3. Prepare your space. Arrange the classroom to facilitate interactions. A circle or U-shaped configuration works best, allowing students to see and engage with each other. Step 4. Warm-up. Kick off with a warm-up activity related to the topic. 
This could be a quick poll, a relevant question, or a short video clip to get thoughts flowing. Step 5. Facilitate the discussion. Start with an open-ended question to dive into the topic. Guide the discussion by asking follow-up questions involving quieter students and summarizing key points to keep the discussion on track. Step 6. Use visual aids. Incorporate visual aids like charts, diagrams, or slides to help clarify complex ideas and keep students engaged. Step 7. Conclude with reflection. Wrap up by asking students to share their thoughts on the discussion. What did they learn? How have their views changed? This reflection solidifies the learning experience. There you have it, a simple and effective way to organize a classroom discussion. By following these steps, you'll create a dynamic learning environment that encourages critical thinking and active participation. Next up, think, pair, share. A simple yet powerful routine. Students first think independently, then discuss with a partner, and finally share with the group. It builds confidence and ensures everyone has a voice. The Think Pair Share Method, a powerful strategy to enhance student engagement and foster meaningful discussion in the classroom. Here's how it works. First, think. Students are presented with a thought-provoking question or prompt related to the lesson. They take a moment to individually reflect on their thoughts and ideas in response to the prompt. Second, pair. Next, students pair up with a partner. They share their thoughts and engage in discussion, actively listening to each other's perspectives. Third, share. Finally, pairs share their ideas with the entire class. Students volunteer to share their insights, or the teacher may call on pairs to present. Throughout the process, the teacher facilitates the discussion, providing guidance and support as needed. Think, Pair, Share encourages all students to participate and promote a collaborative learning environment. Benefits of the Think Pair Share method include increased student engagement, deeper understanding of the material, and the development of critical thinking and communication skills. So, why not incorporate Think Pair Share into your next lesson? Watch as your students become active participants in their learning journey, sharing ideas and gaining insights from their peers. Finally, let's explore the third pen, an excellent tool for group work or reflection during the pause. It encourages equal participation and shared accountability in student tasks. The third pen is a versatile tool for emphasizing key points, making annotations, corrections, and highlighting important information. It is normally a different color from the other pens being used. For example, you might write in black, underline, and circle in red, and correct in green. How you manage your system will be unique to you and your students. This technique enhances clarity and keeps students engaged. Use the third pen to underline main ideas on the whiteboard. Circle important dates and facts during a lecture. Draw attention to critical concepts in student work or correct examination papers. You can also use it to differentiate between types of information, such as definitions, examples, and questions. This visual distinction helps students follow along and understand the material better. Incorporate the third pen in your interactive activities, such as mind maps or brainstorming sessions. To make these exercises more dynamic and visually appealing. By integrating the third pen into your teaching strategy, you can make your lessons more interactive, visually appealing, and effective. And that's it. Five research-backed strategies you can try right away. The pause. Questioning. Classroom discussion. Think. Pair. Share. The third pen. Pro tip. Start with one. Keep it consistent. Reflect. Tweak. Repeat. You don't need to overhaul your teaching, just make small intentional shifts. Try one this week and let us know how it goes. We're here to grow together, one strategy at a time.